In this lesson, we're going to talk about the onion skin and how to use the onion skin with our tools set up here. We will also use this menu here as well. This holds our keyframe breakdown and in between uh, markers that we're going to use in our timeline. So I'm going to put this right here. Now, depending on the style that you wish to animate, you can choose to use the timeline for animation. So that way we can go ahead and do our animation without going into the X sheet right now. So I'm going to grab my brush, but instead of using this brush panel here, I set up my presets here. So I'll press 1. And now I'm ready to go ahead and sketch. For this example, I'm going to do a very simple ball bounce so that way we can go ahead and use our onion tools and then we'll go ahead and do something a little bit more complex. So the first thing I want to do is draw my floor. By holding down my shift key, I can draw a floor here. And then I'm going to go ahead and make that a floor drawing. Then the next thing I want to do is go ahead and add a drawing to do my ball bounce. And this is kind of where we're going to start working on our animation. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my workspace to my Tim's drawing workspace. So that way I am ready to go ahead and do my drawing. And then I'm going to go ahead and check my drawing tools that I have set up for drawing. And the next thing I wish to show you is our onion skin tool here. And we're going to go ahead and do a basic demonstration and then we're going to go do an advanced animation. Now the onion skin tool has a lot of features to it, but I'm actually going to go ahead and show you that we have this toolbar to go with it as well. So you see here with this toolbar, I have my keyframe, my breakdown and my in between that is able to go and work with my onion skin tool. So I'm going to put this back up here. And this toolbar here will allow me to go ahead and make uh, marks on my drawings to be keys, breakdowns, and in-betweens. So I'm going to put this one on here for now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit 1 and go ahead and make my floor and prepare for a simple ball bounce. Holding down my shift key, I can go ahead and make a floor. And it's a very simple one. Now the next thing I want to do is make a new drawing and make it a ball. And go ahead and add a keyframe. And I'm going to go show you here the shortcut key. So I'm going to show you here, this is the default shortcut key, Alt-Shift-R, for making a new uh, drawing. And here, if you want to duplicate, it's Alt-Shift-D. So I can go ahead and hit the control key, Alt Shift R, and make a new drawing. So we'll start with our bar bounce here using my HD screen, and we'll just make a very simple one. Now no, I can hold I can go ahead and erase it using my shortcut keys. And for the eraser tool, you can also hold down E for erase. As long as we get the right tool, then we're okay to make what we want. So there's our ball. Now I can go ahead and select my animation pencil. Make a breakdown if I want. So I can go ahead and start designing the ball bounce. Let's think. We want the ball to come up 
and maybe hover around here in this area, for example. And let's say we want that on frame 10. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and make my guide before I do anything else. So I'm going to use the tools in Harmony because it is paperless animation and I'm not going to I'm not going to handicap myself. I'm not going to handicap myself based on traditional methods, but I'm going to use all the tools that I have in my Toon Boom Harmony to make the ball bounce nicely. I'm going to switch to my animation pencil and I'm going to go ahead and see how I want this to be. Here. And settle in here. And then I wanted to come back down in this direction. So now I have my notes. Look how I used the blue pencil to go ahead and sketch out ideas and notes. That's very useful because then I can go ahead and knock that back if I want to and it will go away. I can go ahead and use a light table and that blue pencil will fade away just nicely if I want it to. I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. Make a new keyframe. And you'll see here how the blue pencil just washes away when I don't want it. And that's important because in traditional animation we want that blue pencil just to be a guide to help me visualize where the animation is going to be. But I keep my keyframes definitely darker so I know exactly where it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and make some frames right now. just to start timing things out. The ball will come up here and hold. It does seem a little bit fast to have it in four frames, but we're going to go ahead and modify it as we feel. Again, I'm going to have my drawing tool ready, and I'm going to select the right layer and draw a breakdown now. And let's say we want this ball to come up right about there. Now here, this being my keyframe, I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Again, you, I don't need to redraw anything if I have it originally. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the base and paste it into my keyframe. And then I can go ahead and a little bit on it. And now here I'm going to mark keyframe. So over here in this frame, this is an in-between pose or breakdown. So I'm going to have B. Just to mark it as the frame in between these two. I can go ahead and modify it a little bit more if I want to. So let's say it starts here. I want it to squash down, then jump up. At least I know the ball will be here in between. Then the next thing I need to do is go ahead and mark the key pose that I have here. So again, I can do a little cheating and put it in position. And then I can mark this as key pose. So 
So here is a very simple example of an animation. So here is a very simple example of our animation of the ball going up. And we can go ahead and make it come back down very quickly. And now we're going to go ahead and use the onion skin tools with our keyframe marking tools. With our marking tools, so that way you can see certain things that you want while you're doing animation. So that way you can see certain things when you make a complex paperless animation. So we're going to go ahead and review the onion skin tool before we go ahead and clean up the ball bounce and show you more about it. So we have our keyframes here. I have my onion skin tool coloring my drawings based on the forward drawing and the behind drawing. And this one here, it focuses on. So right now I can focus on all the drawings that I want to see and go ahead and add in-betweens based on what I want. So for example, let's say I want this ball to come down here and squash down a bit. I can go ahead and do that and mark this as a in-between. So now, because I have my onion skin tool, and I could go ahead and draw my in-betweens. So now I can go ahead and draw my in-betweens. And I'm using my onion skin tool. So now I can go ahead and draw my onion. So now I can go ahead and draw my in-betweens using my onion skin tool. And it's very simple right now. I don't have a very complex animation. But we're going to show you something that's very interesting. For example, here, when I want to go ahead and add a new in-between frame, I'm going to go ahead and pull this over. And I'm going to move this. So that way I can go ahead and add a new drawing, or we call it a new duplicate so I can go ahead and add a new drawing here. There we go. This tool allows me to see my drawings better. Sometimes you want to use this so that way you can go ahead and drag your drawings a little bit easier in between your... So I use... 
If you want to see your drawings, if you want to see your drawings more clearly, you can go ahead and hit this button here. This will allow me to see my thumbnails of my drawings, so that way I can easily go ahead, select it, and drag it over. So now I'm going to draw my in between right here. So in my onion skin, what you see here is still my keyframe. And you see my other keyframe here. And then we have my breakdown here, or the key in between. Let's say, for example, that I just want to see my keyframes here and here, but I do not want to see the in-betweens. This is where this system comes in, where I can go ahead and select which items that I want to see in my onion skin. So I'm going to go ahead and mark some more breakdowns. So let's say I want to add one more breakdown here and I want to see it. I'm going to go ahead and make a new drawing. And then this one I'm also going to call a breakdown. And I want it to kind of let the ball come up and go into form. And I need to see this ball kind of slowly come into shape. So now, for example, I have my keyframes set, I have my breakdowns, I have my in-betweens, and also if I don't want to see any information, I can go ahead and just see my keyframes. And then if I just want to say I want to see my breakdowns, I could turn off the keyframes and just look at the breakdowns in my onion skin. And that's how the onion skin tool is used to help separate what you see if you need to go ahead and do more breakdowns or in-betweens or check your poses between your breakdowns and in-betweens. So now I can see my in-betweens, I can see my breakdowns, and then I can see my key poses. Also, I can go ahead and see my in-betweens and my breakdowns or I can select my key poses. I can see my key poses, my breakdowns, and my in-betweens. Also, I can go ahead and select in-betweens and breakdowns if I want to see those. Or I can go ahead and just see my key poses and my in-betweens. And that's how this menu works with this menu here. This is very useful in order to organize your onion skin tool. It's very useful to have these open with your onion skin tool so that way you can go ahead and organize your drawings so that way you can do paperless animation. We're going to go ahead and practice more with these tools here and the onion skin tool in the next lesson going over advanced onion, going over advanced onion skin tool features. Going over advanced onion skin tool features. Okay, we'll see you in the next lesson.